for the cross-examination, Ms. Hamburger. Thank you, Your Honor. <coughs> um, Captain Taylor, so you, uh, <coughs> did you bring up to the stand with you a copy of that, that transcript that we yes, talked about before? Okay, thank you. You'll notice on the um, lower right-hand corner of each page, there's a number. So I'd uh, like to refer to page 2700. Yes, ma'am. And, and let me first ask you, when you were, um, when you reviewed, the last question I asked you, I think, was, well, first, I asked you to review that transcript, right? Mm -hmm. And you've had a chance to do that? Yes, ma'am. Did you find anything in their testimony where you talked about a phone call at around 10.30 a.m. on the morning of January 2nd, 2014? Uh, no, ma'am. I was never... Um... No mail. Okay. No. So on the bottom of page 2700, or well, about in the middle of that page, you were asked a question at line 15 uh, regarding the text messages. Is that right? Can you repeat your question, ma'am? Well, you were, you were asked about the text messages that uh, you had with the defendant on that same morning, on January 2nd, 2014. Is that right? Yes, ma'am. Well, let me go a little higher on that page. Uh, you said you were asked, was there a time at the beginning of this year that your level of concern increased? And a few lines later, you answered that question saying, yes, I received, or I'm sorry, you didn't say yes. You just said, I received the email text messages from my brother-in-law, Nate, stating that things were getting worse. Is that right? Yes, ma'am. And then for a few pages after that in the transcript, you... Uh, you recounted the, the content of those text messages. Is yes, that right? Yes, ma'am. And then if you look at page 2704, the first question on that page is, and you had some further contact. You answered, yes, ma'am. The next question, was there anything about the additional contact that, you, that had you concerned? You answered, I just knew that he was concerned about the kids, and, I, well, I'll go on. I know that he loved my sister, but I was still overall concerned about, you know, him. And so I would, he would reach out to me, and I would respond. And in a nutshell, just let him know how, let him know how I was, know, know I was praying for him, and also kind of explain to him a little bit later on my current status. So uh, there's nothing in that answer. I could go on, but there's nothing in that answer regarding any phone call on January 2nd, is there? No, ma'am. So when you were asked if you ha had any additional contact with the defendant that left you concerned, you didn't mention that phone call? Right? Not from that day. No, ma'am, I did not. Okay. And then you were asked a question at the bottom of 2704, and were there any times that you felt like he was escalating again? And again, here's your answer. I didn't from, I didn't. From the text messages and even from the phone calls, I couldn't really determine. I knew he was reaching out. I knew that he was trying to contact the kids. And I also knew that he knew I could talk to my sister. But I've always tried, and, uh, and as I expressed to him, I always tried to remain a neutral party. I didn't want to come between their situation. I just wanted to be an advocate, be a brother to him, be a brother to my sister. And so there were times when he would start to communicate with my wife, and he had a great bond with my wife. And so I knew he would reach out to her, and I think she even explained, T is doing a lot of training and has a tough mission, and even schooling. But as far as escalating, I didn't see it. And again, I could go on, your answer is longer, but, um, but there's nothing in that answer. When, when asked about whether the situation, situation was escalating in any way, you did not provide any answer that con contained any information about a January 2nd phone call with the defendant, did you? I, I did not, ma'am. Okay. I, that, those are all the questions I have. Thank you so much. Yes, ma'am. Redirect. Captain Taylor, was Sunday the first time that we had ever gone over your testimony in this case? Yes, sir. Okay. And did we provide you the phone records or did you provide them to us? I provided. You Did you have a conversation with a member of our office 
I'm asking if, if it would be okay if you got the phone records, your phone records, in order to refresh your own recollection. Yeah. It, and, and was that your idea? That was my idea. I just wanted to kind of try to stop and take some time to reflect to see, you know, to recall those events on that particular day. So I thought the phone law would be helpful. Sure. Because you wanted to give a full and fair accounting of what happened? Yes, sir. All right. Um, and th this prior hearing with the transcript that Ms. Hamburgers asked you about, um, I wasn't the attorney during that hearing, correct? No, sir. Okay. And um, you had not um, obtained your phone records for that hearing, correct? I did not. Okay. And it, in looking at your phone records, um, I believe uh, you said that it that it jogged your memory somehow, or uh, I mean, how, how did you come to recall the statement? If I if I can't have the kids, no one will. When I looked at the the phone law compared to the text messages and just trying to fill in a timeline, um, I don't. Um, I was really trying to just trying to get a sense of what was. How was he feeling or what was the emotion, what was going on at that time? But I do recall and looking at, um, especially with I'm about to react, I'm sorry, you know, what was going on in my mind during that time. And I do remember, you know, reaching out to, my, you know, and looking in and draw my memory, looking at the phone log and seeing that I reached out to my dad to say, hey, um, Nate is frustrated. Nate is very, you know, Nate is very frustrated right now. And I'm just really concerned about Tanya's safety, just concerned. And so in looking at that and in reflecting on it in preparation for trial, is it your testimony that the defendant did say that to you, that if I can't have the kids, no one will, after his I'm about to react text message to you? Yes, that line. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, and was that suggested to you by the DA's office? It was not suggested, sir. Okay. Again, at this, um, in terms of this transcript, if you look at page 20, do you have that in front of you? Yes, sir. Page 2705. Um, and again, you, you, the phone records weren't available to anyone that you're aware of back in May 22nd, 2014, correct? No, sir. And that would have been about five weeks after your parents' murder? That's correct, sir. Okay. Um, Approximately. You um, make reference, I believe, to a text message from the 27th of January. Is that right? And that's on line 14 on page 2705? Yes, sir. And can you, and can you tell uh, us about your testimony that day um, about what the defendant um, said to you? Um, that day I stated just... Um, I stated here, I think later, I'm sorry, later that month, the 27th of January, he just asked, um, you know, via text message, talk to your dad, and my response, okay, how's everything going? And then he stated, going to pull up. Um, he said, if your dad wants to smack someone, he needs to come smack me. And I'm trying to be cool about everything, but it's getting out of hand. Tanya got to straighten this mess out. She's the one that got everyone in this mess because she is mad and the kids don't want to be down there. Tanya ain't thinking about the kids at all. She's uh, she's going to hate when Jeremy go off on her, go, go off in all, on all, all of them down there. He says, mom has been telling, um, mom's been telling him lies about everything and grandparents not talking to him about, at all. He is trying to be respectful to them, but he said, your dad pulled his gun out on him, uh, put his hands on him, and was calling him all kinds of bad names. It's not right, um, and all I can, and all of this can be over. And you all know that it's not making any, not making sense. Thought Tanya was wise and mature than this. Um, she's not trying to work nothing out for the kids' sake. Mad and attitude about nothing. And my response, I'm praying for, um, I'm praying for her. His response later, uh, she's going to hate it when they come back on her. Okay. Thank you.
Thank you, Captain Taylor. Nothing further. <clears throat> Redirect. I'm sorry, recross. <laughs> yes, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, uh, Captain Taylor, if you would just continue reading there um, the, uh, the paragraph following the one that you, that you just read on page 2706, yes. at line, line 9. Yes, ma'am. My last correspondence with him was on March 29th at 6, 11 p.m. He stated, how is everything going? Just thinking about you all. Take care and love you guys. And my response is 737, March 29th. Man, we've been thinking about, we've been thinking and praying for you and the family. Just looking forward um, to when we get back to North Carolina, eat some chicken and barbecue with you. Talk to you later. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. And regarding the, sorry, the, the January 27th text message, um, this was regarding an incident between the defendant and your father. Is that right? Is that your understanding? Yes, ma'am. And your understanding is, your, is the defendant was expressing some frustration about that situation. Is that right? Yes, ma'am. This is, and this is an incident, is it your understanding this is an incident where um, Jeremy had uh, indicated that your father had assaulted him or, or they'd had an altercation of some sort? Yes, ma'am, that same incident, I believe. Okay. Um, I, I don't have any further questions. Thank you. Go ahead, sir. Um, you, you've previously said that you felt your role was to try to mediate this. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Uh, on January 2nd in particular, but kind of throughout this period, um, was part of your motivation and your responses to defuse the defendant? It was defuse him and, um, and just to let him know that I, that I care about him okay. and that I want the best for, for them. Thank you. No further questions? Thank you, sir. You may step down. <laughs> Thank you. Your Honor, at this time the state would call Ms. Latonya Allen to the stand. May I approach the clerk while she's coming? Yes. <coughs> Do you solemnly swear the testimony you give to be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Thank you. Mr. Waller. Thank you, Your Honor. Ms. Allen, good afternoon to you, ma'am. Good afternoon. Uh, will you please state your, state your name for the record? Latanya Taylor Allen. And Ms. Allen, um, how are you related to the um, victims in this case? Um, my mother, Anglia Taylor, and my father, Sylvester Taylor, Sr. And Miss um, Miss Allen, do you do you have any kids, ma'am? Yes. Can you tell us a little bit about your kids? I have three children. Um, Jeremy Taylor goes by JT, and he is 17. He's a senior. And um, I have two girls, Nautica Holden and Amber Holden, ages 10 and 11. What grades are they in, ma'am? They're in, um, Nautica started middle school this year. She's in the sixth grade, and Amber is in the fifth grade. And Captain Taylor that just testified, how, how is he related to you? That's my brother. And you've got some other folks back here behind us. Um, who are your other family members that you have here with you? Um, my stepbrother is here, Martonio Royster, um, his wife, Erica, and then, um, my husband is here, Jamar Allen, my brother, Sylvester Taylor II, and his wife, Carly Taylor. My grandmother is also present. My mother's mom, Hattie Smith. My mother's sister is here, Sharon Johnson, along with her daughter, Hannah Johnson. My dad's um, family is here. His niece is here, Christy Carter, and a friend of mine's, Gia, is here. Thank you, Ms. Allen. 
you said that you that you've remarried and um, you're now married to Jamar Allen. Is that right? Yes. How? When did y'all get married? We got married August the first of last year. Twenty sixteen mm -hmm. now. Yes, sir. All right. Um, well, well, thank you, Latanya. And let me uh, let me turn your attention to the defendant. Um, how do you know the defendant in this case? Um, Nathan Holden is my ex-husband. When uh, do you recall when when you were divorced from the defendant? Yes. When was that? Um, I think it was finalized um, of twenty fifteen. I'm not sure of the exact date. That's April. Fine. That's fine. We'll take some look at some paperwork in, in a little while. Uh, let me go back to the beginning, and let me ask you a little bit about how you and uh, the defendant started started your relationship when you first met him when you first started uh, your I guess romantic relationship um, we started dating in middle school um, going into high school and uh, we started out really as best friends like I could talk to him about anything and he could talk to me about anything um, we was like really close friends and then it grew into a romantic relationship whereas i got pregnant with my son um when did, when did that happen Latonya? that happened in high school i was 15. and just to give us a little frame of ref reference how, how old are you how old are you now 34. what's your date of birth 2 22 82. Now, is the is the defendant older or, or younger than you? He's a year younger than me. So, when you were in the eleventh grade and had and had JT, he would have been in, in the tenth grade. That's correct. And was he was he in high school with you? Went to high school. He went to a different high school at that time. Your your brother that j just testified, Captain Taylor. Did you know that that he knew the defendant defendant as well? Yes. And your brother talked a little bit about that y'all kind of grew up in the same community out, out out there. Tell us a little bit about that, how you knew him, how you knew the defendant and his family and whatnot growing up. Um, I knew him from um, his family lived in the same community that I grew up in, Raleigh Hill community. His grandmother um, lived down the street from my grandmother, and the families were pretty close. Um, we grew up pretty close, and then they moved to Jonesville, which is um, a few houses down from my mother's church. So, um, well, before we go any further, let me—you mentioned your mother, uh, your mother's church. Uh, you said your mother's Anglia Taylor. Yes. Uh, what was what kind of what was her occupation? She was the pastor of um, Zion Hill Holiness Church in Wake Forest, North Carolina. How long had she been the, the pastor there? She was ordained in 2000, and she had been pastoring ever since. And you say your dad is Sylvester Taylor? Yes, sir. Tell me a little bit about your dad. What was his, what was his uh, career, his profession? My dad was a retired um, Vietnam vet. Um, he was disabled, so he didn't work. Um, he was the deacon at our church. Did he do some odd jobs around? He the did. Hour? He did um, odd jobs like yard work um, in the community. He worked at the church. Uh, he kept up the maintenance of the church. And he also helped um, where he was living at, the owner. He helped him with the farming and taking care of the um, property for him because he was elderly. And kind of their, their general personality, how would you describe your dad's personality? Overruled. My dad was a very firm, um, strict man. Um, like I said, he was a Vietnam vet, um, but he loved us. He loved his children. He loved his family. He worked hard. Uh, he was dedicated to our church and to the people in the community. And how about your how about your mom? Her her general personality. She was so loving. Overruled. She was so loving. Um, she didn't meet a stranger. She loved everybody. She was just a, a very positive woman. Like no no matter how um bad a situation was, she always found the good in everything and she loved her grandchildren. 
Well, let me let me tie that to the defendant a little bit. You said that you all had a um, a child together. I believe you said your 11th grade year. Yes. Uh, what year was JT born? 99. 99. And had you and the defendant been dating up until that point, or was the was the pregnancy something that was kind of unexpected? Um, the pregnancy was unexpected. Um, we wasn't together during the pregnancy because he didn't believe that was his child. Um, so he waited, and um, he was advised by his parents not to um, participate during the pregnancy until we had received the test results that it was his son. And uh, once we got those results back in Jeremy, um, he was actively involved in Jeremy's life. The, it, it was um, confirmed that the defendant is JT's father? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, when, when JT came along, what um, did y'all just stay boyfriend and girlfriend, or did you change your relationship at that point? Yes, we um, we stayed boyfriend and girlfriend. Then. At, at some point, did you and the defendant marry? Yes, we did. Um, we married in 2012. It was like my second year in college. 20, or 2000. Two, 2012. Two, or 2002. I'm sorry. Yes, 2002. I'm sorry. That's all right. Um, well, go, again, going back to your parents, what was your what was your dad's relationship back in around you know ninety nine and two thousand two with with the defendant? He didn't like him. Okay. Was there anything specific about about that relationship? Um, he felt like um, Nathan was like arrogant. Like he was just um, I don't know. He he didn't like his he didn't like his attitude. He didn't like he didn't like him. Um, when I told him we was getting married, he was just like, you know, as long as you're happy, I'm going to support you. So um, he dealt with it. And then talking about your mom, how how was she involved with your with your marriage? She loved him. She actually married us. As part of her pastoral and yes. motherly duties. Yes. Where'd y'all get married? At our church, Zion Hill Church. Did Did your dad go to the wedding? He did. He walked me down the aisle. Um, him and my son. Okay. Him and your son, JT. Yes. Okay. When you got married in two thousand two, I mean, you're both fairly fairly young at that point. But what was what was kind of the relationship that you and the defendant had when you got married in two thousand two? Um, it was okay. The first, I would say, the first two to three years. But um, I got pregnant with my first daughter and things just started kind of going downhill from there um it was a financial strain because I wasn't able to work and so we was um living off one income we bounced around um moved several times we moved in with a family member and um it was it was a it was a financial strain very early on and then as soon as I had Nautica I got pregnant with Amber so they're like uh, 11 months apart and so um, I wasn't able to work at the time. And so it was a strain on having just one income. And at the time, he was a barber. So it wasn't like a consistent, steady income at the time. So Nautica's your, old, your oldest child, oldest yeah. daughter. Yes. And Amber's the younger daughter. Yes. Sir. What years were, were they born? Um, 2005 and 2006. What, prior to their births, you said you you were working up until that point. What type of work did you do? Um, I actually finished college, and um, I was in the banking industry. I worked here at um, um, State Employees Credit Union. I worked there, and um, a manager at Walmart. And you said y'all were kind of just relying on one income once the girls came along, so I, I assume it was the defendant that was working. and Yes. You said he was a barber. Did he hold down other, other um, jobs? I think he well? did like a transportation um, cab service during the school years. And you, when you say he was a barber, did he have a shop or was he doing it out of the house? He was it? working at a shop at that time. Okay. All right. Well, after Amber's born in 2005, you said? Six. 2006. Kind of give us a, a idea of how your relationship with the defendant went went from that point. Um, it, it was, it was hard. Um, I was hearing rumors that he was cheating. Um, from that time on, I would just brush it off. 
Um, financially, it was a strain. He wasn't home much. Do you know where he was? Or? No. Okay. And you mentioned cheating. That was at some point during your rela- your relationship with him. Did you have an affair? I did. Okay. When, about when was that, Miss Latanya? It was like two thousand and six, I believe, and I think it lasted about a month. Did you ever tell the defendant about about that affair? Did he walk in on you or anything like, like I that? I never told him, but I always wanted to tell him. Um, I knew he would he would hurt me and the other guy because. Sustain as to you can. Sustain as to the word no. Uh, you can offer an opinion if. It, if you'll rephrase the question. Sure. sure. Um, do you know specifically if if uh, uh, the defendant knew that you that you had had an affair? No, but he always assumed it. Okay. And why didn't you tell the defendant that you that you'd had a, an affair? I knew he would hurt me. Sustained us to the word no, unless you have some specific personal knowledge. If you have an opinion, you can state it as such. Did you? Did you have an opinion um, as to how the defendant we re- would react if you told him? I didn't. I wouldn't feel safe, and I wouldn't. Um, I didn't believe he would forgive me. Overruled. So that is, that's around two thousand six. Yes. And, and to be clear, Latanya, you, you said that things were kind of uh, not great in your rela- in your relationship. Things had deteriorated. Was there any? Physical violence by by the defendant. At no. Time. Was there any physical violence towards the defendant from you at at any point? No. Were you um Were you still living together though in the, in the same house? We were living together. Yes. And were you um? Did you spend? You said you, you said you wasn't home a lot, but did you spend a significant a time, amount of time with him? I was working at that time, um. So when I would come home. He will be getting ready to leave out. In the times that you did that you did share with him, though, over the ten year period, did did you ever exhi- exhibit any um, uh, nightmares or flashbacks or anything like that from the defendant? No. Okay. Was he in any kind of therapy for any issues during the time that y'all were married? No. Okay. Um, and where were where were you working after the girls? You, you weren't taking care of the girls at the home? Um, I worked at BB&T right here um, for a year, and then I started working at Department of Revenue. How about the defendant? When was What was he doing at this time? Was he still doing the bar? He was stuff? cutting hair in the house. In the house. When would he have people come over to the house? All day, every day. Okay, Latanya, let's fast forward a little bit and... Um, was the relationship kind of this up and down and growing apart that you've described to us over over the next couple of years? We definitely were growing apart. I was very unhappy, but um, I just stayed because we had the kids. But I was I was unhappy. Um, I didn't know how to leave, and um, I knew leaving would be a, a major decision. Like I knew that if I left, I wasn't coming back. Did you talk with your mother and father about about your situation at home or about your thoughts about leaving? No. Were they unaware that you, or excuse me, were they aware that you were unhappy in the home? They were aware. And unhappy in the marriage, I should say. Yes. Okay, curious to um, December of of 2013. Okay. I want you to take us to to that time period were you still married to the defendant in yes December sir 2013 yes what was what was your relationship like with the defendant at, at that point um december was our anniversary and we never like celebrated on our anniversary and this one i was very frustrated i was mad because um he kind of just waited around the house for me to fall asleep and he left and he was gone all night and I didn't see him until the next morning. So we didn't do anything for the anniversary, and I was I was hurt. Was this the first time you hadn't done anything on your anniversary? No. So it sounds like it was kind of a, a, 
uh, uh, pattern or collection of events that brought you to your anniversary there. Yes, sir. Okay. And your anniversary, you said, was December 7th? Yes. What else um, happened around that time period, Latanya? Um, him and my son, um, he beat my son with a broom. How did you become aware of that situation? He called me and um, he said, you need to come get your son. Um, he said, you need to come get your son right now. And where were you when this? I was at happened? work. Was it during the business hours or? Yes, I was getting ready to get off work. Um, I think I had about an hour left. What um, what did he tell you? Why you need to come get your son? I guess he said that um, Jeremy was outside. He shouldn't have been outside. He was like, I know he was um, messing around, um, messing around either with a girl or something like that, or hanging out with his friends, and he's supposed to be in the house. And what did the defendant tell you he had done to your son? Um, he didn't tell me. My son called me crying, saying, Daddy just beat me with a broom. And when you heard that, what, what did you do? I'll be home. I'm coming home now. Okay. When you, Where were you all living at, at this point? We were living in a community called um, Deer, Deerhurst, which is in Wendell. And is this post your, your anniversary, so sometime between December 7th and December 20th? Yes, sir. When you got home, and did you find Jeremy there? Yes. And did he tell you again what, what had happened? He was in his room crying. Did you notice any injuries about him at that point? Um, I didn't check. Um, he just was telling me, you know, he was just hurt all over. Do you know what, what type of broom it was? It yes, it was like a metal, little cheap um, Dollar General broom, but it was a metal broom. And where was uh, where was the defendant when you got home? He wasn't there, I don't believe. Did you confront him about hitting your son with the broom at that point? Yes, and he just said he shouldn't have been outside. Well, let me ask you kind of um, in general, up until this point, Latanya, can you kind of describe uh, the defendant's relationship with with JT? Um, he was like really frustrated at Jeremy at that time because um, Jeremy was we we caught Jeremy several times looking at, at porn and things like that. So he was doing some things that um, he was getting frustrated about as far as you know um, the things that Jeremy were doing at the time. Did they do a, did they do a lot of things together, the defendant and JT, around this time period? No. Okay. How about the relationship that the defendant had with with your daughters, Amber and Nat Nautica? What was that relationship like? I mean, he loved them and and he probably did things with them, but um, my youngest daughter, she said she don't even remember. Did they do a lot of things together? Not much. The kids were uh, mostly with me. With you. Mm -hmm. I'm going to sustain the objection. I suggest Jerry to disregard the prior answer. So the kids mainly stayed stayed with you. Yes, sir. Okay. After the the incident with Jeremy and um, the defendant beating him with the broom, what what did you decide to do at that point, Latanya? Um. I didn't want to, I knew I was, I was done. I was tired. Um, I was unhappy. I was hurt. And I just didn't see a change um, because anytime I would bring up anything um, about working on our marriage, it just, it went downhill. It was, it was, everything was my fault. So um, I was just tired. I didn't see us working anything out. I was done. I was unhappy. So, um, I didn't want to leave right then. I kind of waited, I think, about a week or two because I didn't want to leave upset or in a, I wanted us to separate in a as peaceful as possible. So I would get to things where kind of like calm down. Had y'all ever separated before? Like either one of you moved out for a little while for a weekend or week or in the no, sir. Cool off. This was first time you'd 
you decided to do it. Yes, sir. And I think you said a minute ago that it, you know, when you made that decision, you intended to, to stick to it. Yes, sir. Okay. And, you know, you said you waited a week or so to do it. Were you concerned about how the defendant was going to react to, react to this? I was. Okay. Why, why were you concerned about how he was going to react? I didn't know how he would react. I knew he would be upset, but um, I knew he wouldn't take it well. So... Were you concerned for your safety if you if you moved out? I was. Well, when when did you make the uh, decision to to leave? Um, it was a, like a few days before Christmas Eve, I believe. Around December twentieth. Twentieth, yes. Does that sound about right. Yes, sir. Okay. And, and how did you how did you break the news to the defendant that you you were leaving? Um, he was working on that Friday, which is the 19th. And I called him and told him, I was like, I'm leaving. I'm not happy. Um, I don't see us working this out and I'm gone. I can't do this anymore. And me and my kids are going to move in with my parents. And he was like kind of quiet at first. And then he was like, um, you know, he was like, I don't understand. He didn't understand why. Um, can we work? You know, he was just like, um, I don't know, you know, what you're trying to do, things like that. And then he said, um, well, if you leave, just leave the TV. And um, I said, okay. And he came home that night. We kind of talked about it. And I, I was just firm with that, that I wasn't trying to work it out or anything. He left for work that Saturday morning, and when he left, that's when Jeremy and I started packing up and moving things into the storage. Did the defendant ask about the kids at that point, or where they want to keep the kids at the house at that point? Um, yes, and I and I told him I'm gonna keep the kids, but I'm not trying to take them away from him. I told him that we can, I we, you know, we can get joint custody um i definitely wasn't trying to keep him away from the kids i still wanted him to be involved in their lives i just didn't want to be with him anymore and and how did the kids react to the to the separation um initially jeremy was happy because you know he got beat and then he just he was just happy he was like i'm so happy he was the one actually moving things and like rushing and trying to hurry up and get it done but he was glad that I was doing this. And the girls just followed right with the plan. And they, they, they were so young. They so. were still young. Mm -hmm. okay. And you said you went and you moved in with your uh, with your parents. That yes, sir. Anglia and Sylvester. Yes. Tell, tell us a little bit about where they live. We've seen some pictures of the house, but you kind of give us the general area where your parents resided at that point. Um, They lived in Wendell, right off of um, Eagle Rock Road on Lake Glad Road, but it was down like a long path um, and you can't see the house from the road. Um, it was like farmland around there, big open space and um, quiet neighborhood. Is this the house that you and your brothers and um, grew up in? Grew no. Up in? How long have they been staying there? Um, a couple of years, I probably would say about five years or so when you moved in uh i guess in on december 20th of 2013 what what was kind of the living arrangement there um well i was in my mom and dad had stuff everywhere so it took a while for us to get settled there so we used a room the first room for the girls and the back room I would sleep in. And then they also had a couch that laid out to a bed, which is where Jeremy slept. So you you move in there and that was kind of the, the sleeping arrangement. Yes. Now, Latonya, a minute ago you said that you didn't, you know, you still wanted the defendant to be involved in the kids' lives and, and, Jer and Jeremy's life. Um, tell us a little about Christmas, how, how that worked out. Did you let JT go over there? I let Jeremy um go over there i think he was with him christmas i believe and i had the girls um he wanted us to get together so he could get the um the kids some things for christmas and that's he bought jeremy a cell phone at that time and um 
So JT ended up staying with them. Once he got the phone, he's like, I'll just stay with dad, mom. So I was like, okay. And the girls were with me. You, you mentioned the phone. Was the phone a surprise to you in terms of a, a Christmas gift? Yes, it was a big surprise because we had agreed that Jeremy was not ready for a cell phone because he was watching porn and doing some things that he shouldn't have been doing. So we had agreed um, earlier in the year that he wasn't ready for a phone. So that was his Christmas gift from his dad was the phone, was the cell phone. We were talking about Jeremy's or JT's relationship with his dad a moment ago. Did you see that relationship change after you left on December 20th? Yes, sir. Tell us about that. Um, Jeremy um, wanted to stay with him, which was fine with me, but um, I, I didn't feel right about it. I didn't want him staying there, um, but they became closer. And, and did it? kind of transformed from almost a father-son relationship to more of a, a friendship relationship? Yes, sir. Overruled. After you left, tell us a little bit about how the relationship between you and, and the defendant, I guess, evolved um, or changed after you left. Um, things were pretty... I mean, peaceful, like it was fine. Uh, we were communicating and it just started changing right after um, the holidays. Um, it was January the 1st is when things changed. What happened that day, ma'am? Um, New Year's Day. Yes. He called and he was like, I'm coming to get my kids. And I was like, no, you're not. Um, he said, I'm coming over there right now to get my kids. They got school in the morning, and I'm taking them to school. I'm coming over there right now. And um, he was upset. He was yelling. And um, I told him not to come over here. I think he called my dad, and they had words, and that's when my dad called the police. And did the police come to your house that day, or did they just handle it over the phone? They came to the house. Did the defendant ever show up at your no. house that day? Okay. Do you know if the police talked to uh, the defendant on January 1st? They did. Okay. Um, he was. He had called my phone back. He had hung up, called back, and the police said, let me speak to him. And, and so the police spoke to him at that point? Yes, sir. Okay. Do you, did you overhear that, hear that conversation? Um, I was standing right there, okay. yes. And what... Um, what did the police tell the defendant that day? He told them that, um, told them not to come over here. He said the best thing to do to to handle this um, is to file for joint custody. And he said, you guys can go down there tomorrow and file. And he said, Latanya, what time are you available to go? And I said, probably around three. And we agreed to meet downtown the next day to file for the joint custody uh, and that up until this point you said that the conversation was i guess pretty heated between you and the defendant was this kind of the first time you heard him this yes angry? yes okay. um how did you feel hearing um hearing from the defendant this kind of angry i'm um, scared um i thought he was coming he called my dad saying he was coming he called my mom's phone and um I, we were scared, so my dad immediately called the police. And after the defendant and the police officer had the conversation on the phone, did you did you express your your concern for your safety to the police officer? Yes, um, we wanted to know. You know, my dad wanted to know what was his rights if he came on his property. Um, what was he? Able, what could he do to protect his family? And um, I was scared. So once the police got off the phone with Nathan, he told me the the best thing for me to do to protect myself and my kids and the family was to file a restraining order first thing in the morning and also file for custody of my kids. So that, that would have been January 2nd of 2014. Yes. And 
you know, with the holiday schedule and whatnot, was was that the first opportunity that you would have to come down to a, to the courthouse? Yes, sir. And file that way. Yes, sir. Mr. Waller, we're going to break right yes, there. It's five o'clock. <clears throat> uh, ladies and gentlemen, we'll break for the afternoon. Resume tomorrow morning at nine thirty. Please recall the instructions and rules. Don't talk about this case among yourselves or with anyone else. Don't form or express opinions about the outcome. No media, no independent investigation into these matters, and no conversations with parties, witnesses, or lawyers. Leave your notepads in your chairs, and please gather in the deliberation room at 9.30 tomorrow morning. Thank you very much for your service. We'll see you in the morning. Everyone else, please remain seated. Yes, ma'am. I think we may have another ex parte matter to take up with you. That'll be fine. I can meet uh, to review it. Anything else? No, sir. All right, very good. Be in recess till 9.30 tomorrow morning.